All right, so today we're gonna try and take the uh, design lure we did in a separate video. Did it uh, released it yesterday, day before, depends on when I can edit this. I got the printers running right now, so if you hear those, uh, I got a side project going on, so if you hear stepper motor music, I apologize, but hopefully the mic won't pick it up too bad. So, we're gonna do uh, a little bit nervous on this one with the VAC 50 and the molding, because there's about 10 of them in the gang of the PLA printed part, so it'll will eventually inject 10 lures so a little nervous about it not sure how the vac 50 is going to form to it but let's give her a rip and see There really wasn't a way to get a sprue hole out of each individual lure in the mold. So basically what I did is I just kind of cut it out of the very tip thinking that it would kind of just come out of the mold like that. And I think when I did that it ended up opening up the space on the rear end of the, the, the when it tapers down to the end of the lure. I think that opened the mold up a little bit so when you inject it forcefully all that plastisol came out. So what I ended up doing was I just switched it up to do a just a regular hand pour with hot plastisol over it and then scrape it flat. So when I was setting the PLA part in the mold itself, I don't think I got it exactly half and half. Like I didn't get one side of the mold exactly halfway down and the other side halfway down so when you split it apart the mold was on either side. The problem with that is then we end up kind of having gaps where we didn't want them to be um which isn't that big of a deal on more of a simple model like the frog something that's big it's a lot of plastic in it but on something like this when there's 10 individual lures i think that's where it became a problem because there's any little bit of a gap in that mold when you're injecting that plastisol is going to run in there like water right and it's just going to get everywhere so the other thing to consider here is that i did this without a vacuum chamber, so I couldn't degas the VAC-50. So when you're agitating, and especially with uh, the driver and the drill agitator, 
you're introducing a whole lot of air into the mixture. And when I poured the back 50 first and then set the PLA part on top of it, what you're doing is those air bubbles are going up to the surface and creating a pretty, pretty bad surface finish on the top side of that mold. When you pour it on the top of the PLA for the second half, the top half of the mold, that's usually fine, right? Because then the, all that air is coming up and out of the VAC 50. So if you have bubbles on the top, who cares? It's away from your final product. So something to take into account. So after I figured out that the injection molding technique probably wasn't gonna work for this fine a detail, I'm sure it would work if I spent some more time and actually tried to get the mold set up the way it's supposed to, but I'm an impatient guy. So we used only one face and then did the overhand pour and I think it turned out pretty well for that in that case, as long as you can take that straight edge and wipe it off to kind of clear out this webbing that comes up from just overhand pouring. I think it turned out pretty well. They're nice micro fishing baits. Probably try and use them this uh, winter still. We're still sitting at about negative five degrees at night. So I'm sure we'll have ice for a while. Plus you can use this kind of lure uh, crappie fishing in the spring. You can use a bluegill fishing in the fall or even bluegills too when they set up on their beds. So if this is something you might be into, I do a lot of this on the channel. Uh, I love fishing and I love 3D printing and might as well try and combine those two things and make it into something cool. Maybe you want to subscribe, leave a like, comment. If you dislike, let me know what it is. Always love to improve my videos. And keep your amps up and your filament dry.